I'm Dennis Shepler. Um, I have been a part of the uh, Matt Allen Christmas Bird Count for a number of years and done some artwork for them. Uh, I'm from Houston, Texas. First one on the Christmas Bird Count, Matt Allen. Uh, it's been about maybe six or seven years, possibly more. Uh, at any rate, uh, I was assigned to the Old Gulf area with uh, Sumitha, uh, Mark, and a number of other people. I came with friend Fred Collins and was very thrilled to get on that property, the Old Gulf property, which is a marvelous piece of land with some great birds on it. And uh, I know that when we came back to the Countdown dinner, uh, they had the shirts that they had presented. And for a number of years, they'd been photographs. And one year they did a painting of McGilbrey's Warbler. And I thought, wow, that'd be kind of fun to uh, be a part of that. I mean, I've, I've done some artwork. I've uh, been doing it since I was a little kid. I'm not a trained artist, uh, but I thought, gee, uh, if Brent would be amenable to that, uh, I think it'd be cool to get my, some of my artwork on a shirt. Uh, Brent was great. He gracious about it. Uh, he said, sure. And I started doing some paintings just for the count. And uh, for the last few years, I've been very fortunate to have everybody like what I've done enough that uh, they invited me to do it the following year. So. I've been thrilled uh, to be able to take part in it. The count itself is just a fabulous count. Um, I'd actually met Brent a number of years previous to, to my participation in the Matt Allen count. Uh, I met him on the Freeport Christmas bird count. And uh, I had been doing that count for many, many years. Uh, it was started by a friend of mine, Victor Emanuel. And so I think the probably the next thing to do when I finally got to the point where I could do multiple types of counts during the years was to include Matt Island, which is a truly fabulous count. Uh, also, access to the private property. The wonderful landowners have been so kind to uh, the folks in the count, letting us go on that property. And I have found that Old Gulf is just uh, fabulous. It's an old uh, sulfur t uh, mining town. Uh, we stay at a hunting club uh, that's there, or we have. Um, so, it's, um, the property is wonderful. Uh, a, a typical day uh, on, the, at, on the old golf section. Uh, if we've stayed at the hunting lodge that's adjacent to the property, uh, it's very quick and easy. We have breakfast and get going and we're uh, waiting for a little bit of light uh, so we can actually start seeing the birds, but we're listening too. Um, or, we, cut, we meet at one of the local restaurants or uh, convenience stores, get a little bit organized, and everybody drives in uh, carpools if they can. Uh, we arrive, open up the gates, close the gates behind us, typical Texas stuff to do, close those gates. And then uh, we start out and fan out in the first part of the property, uh, moving across in that an area of probably five to 10 acres where there's often many wonderful uh, rarities show up, as well as really good birds like getting a woodcock and getting great looks at birds. Uh, we're in constant communication uh, via uh, walkie-talkies, and uh, we move through that uh, area almost till probably 10 in the morning. Uh, then we move down to where the uh, there's a big lake that we come to, and there's also old buildings that were part of the property uh, for Old Gulf in the Gulf Sulphur Company, I think it operated that um, prior to many years ago. It's finally shut down. It's considered a ghost town. Um, at any rate, we bird in that area with brush country types of birds, picking up a variety of things that are actually demanded by Brent that we pick those things up. And uh, they're, they're very important to the count. So we cover our areas. We pretty much stay together. And then we move on to another impoundment, a water impoundment to pick up a number of ducks and other things, uh, other species. And uh, we have lunch. Uh, we do a countdown at lunch so we can bring everything together as to how many uh, of the various species had been seen. Um, and then we fan out again in the afternoon. We uh, hit the, some of the same places a little bit if we've missed something, uh, but we have so much of the land to do. Uh, we sometimes will split up further and. Uh, I may go further back into the property 
uh, than the rest of the group does. Uh, we eventually rejoin at the gate and close those gates and move down to another portion of our count area that's marshlands, uh, Spartana marshlands, uh, pick up shorebirds, increases our list because we like to have that daily list, run it up as big as we can. Uh, we pick up um, longbill thrasher at a particular area that's uh, uh, required of us and uh, we used to get it every year. We've, we may have missed it. Uh, at any rate, we do one more countdown right as it gets dark, and then we head over to the countdown dinner. So we're prepared, uh, for the most part, to uh, enjoy ourselves, enjoy the wonderful meal that all those folks in Matagorda County, all the people that are involved in this count are just, they're fabulous people. They've been nothing but kind to us, uh, and it's a thrill. And Brent does a marvelous job, very well organized, it has got a lot of good information about counts prior to this and then he runs through the list and we cheer our way to a new record if we can. The leader of the area is Sumitha Prasad and uh, she's joined by her longtime partner in crime, Mark Sherman. Uh, there are a number of different people that kind of come and go during the years. Uh, there's been a number of people that are consistently there. Um, but it's, it's a good group. It's a lot of sharp birders. Uh, they're uh, very, they have very good ears. I don't have the, the ears like Mark Sherman can hear any kind of pip and he can identify it very quickly. Sumitha is also very good. Uh, so it's, it's always an interesting group. Sometimes folks I've not met, uh, there's a, but those are the core people and I've only been doing it uh, for a few years now, but they've done it extensively. One of the stories I can tell about something that didn't really actually have to do with birding itself in some ways, but it sure affected me, is that we had an incredibly uh, foggy morning. And I kind of pride myself on the fact that I've got a good sense of direction and I wandered off from the group. I do that a lot. And I wandered through the fog and I had sort of this, my bearings were okay because I knew that one of the directions was the intercoastal waterway because from time to time I could hear a tugboat going, but it was incredibly foggy. And we carried walkie talkies, but I, I thought to myself, I'm not gonna call for help. I know how to get out of this. And I wandered and wandered and wandered. And after about 15 or 20 minutes, we were. Everybody's getting ready to go. They're honking the horns at me and I had to break down, get on the walkie talkie and said, where are you? Honk those horns and let me know. And I finally wandered back sort of sheepishly and uh, everybody had a good laugh about it. But wow, I was confused and turned around and it can happen. the greatest tradition for any Christmas bird count is the countdown dinner and uh, and it's a wonderful one it's, it's the best I've ever been at I think so yeah that's the great tradition I like because there's good food and good camaraderie at the end of the day and you see a lot of folks you haven't seen uh, you know for a whole year uh, so or, or for more years so it's really wonderful to kind of reconnect that's that to me is when we walk in that door and everybody's getting ready and we put in a full day uh, the countdown dinner is the, is the real treat. Yeah. Artistically, uh, I started drawing as a kid, so I'm self-taught. And for a long time, uh, when I was raising my family for many, many years, I kind of put it aside. I did a little bit here and there. And so once I retired, uh, it gave me the opportunity to set about trying to improve what I, what I do. Uh, I work in watercolor and acrylics, and primarily acrylics. I've been fortunate enough to have a, a wee bit of training and background from uh, John P. O'Neill, uh, dear friend, and uh, also uh, a little bit of uh, help from and guidance from a, a finest ponder Bennett, Tony Bennett, another friend. But generally it's just me. Uh, I try to use my own photographs. I'm not much of a photographer, so it ends up that uh, I have to kind of work my way through all the details from my blurry or lousy photos. And so I depend upon a lot of the photos that, are, that I find on the internet. It's not like the days uh, in which the folks could go out and 
either shoot a bird and then draw it from uh, their field experience. Those days are gone. I have used specimens. Uh, I've been fortunate to, to uh, get hold of specimens at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. I've not gone to the Texas Cooperative Wildlife Collection yet, but uh, specimens do help. They're very good. But now the internet is filled with photographs that are so phenomenal from the really fine photographers out there that tiny little details of feathers and stuff, once you've got your sketch and drawing and things, if you're looking for that blurred area of your photograph and trying to get some details, there'll always be uh, some really nice photos uh, that you can at least utilize to get an idea of where, where you're going with the, with the painting. So, yeah. <clears throat>